Hey dog lovers, in this video I'm going to show you how to make these totally adorable pom-pom dogs using your loom tool and a felting needle. So let's go over real quickly what you'll need and then I'm going to go over the basics of how to make a dog. So what you need are any of your loom tool, it doesn't matter which one. You need a felting needle. And if you have um, a styrofoam or a felting pad, that would be great. Some eyes. In this case, I just use a solid black um, glass eye. They're really easy. These noses, um, you could actually use felt for the nose as well, but I find this works really well and it's cute. You'll need roving. So you will need the littlest bit of roving. So this is why I'm showing you just a tiny bit. So if you're not familiar with what roving is, it basically looks like cotton candy and it's 100% um, wool. And you need 100% wool for the color of the dog. Sharp scissors, and then not pictured here is glue. I like using this glue because um, it's just available everywhere and it actually is a great textile wool. Before you get started, what I usually like to do is I like to find inspiration. Now all three of these dogs are based on my friend's dog, so it was really, really fun to make. So these will go, go away after this video to their homes. And then since I have this color yarn, I don't have a dog in mind, so I just, you know, search for some dogs. So I'm gonna do this, maybe some a uh, dog similar to this. So, you know, this pom-pom dogs works really well for a dog that has relatively long hair or long fur. Doesn't work well with very, very short um, hair and fur dogs, like my own dog. So, um, just because it's, you know, with the pom-pom creates a lot of shag, but it's gonna be so fun and it's so easy. And let's see what else, you'll be surprised. So I'm gonna go over the basics. So what I'm first gonna do is gonna show you how to make a pom-pom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the eyes and the nose and then the ears. Those are the things that basically makes a dog. So before I do that, I just wanna um, bring your attention real quickly to the fact that all these dogs, these two have a raised nose. Do you see that? So that's what I'm gonna do because it's a little bit harder to do that. This one has no raised nose whatsoever. This just got glue onto the um, the pom pom, and then each of them always have eye sockets. So that's going to be the first part that they do. And then ears will be very different for all the dogs. This one has kind of a um, long ear. These has tiny little ears. This one is made out of yarn, the same yarn that I use for the dog. And then these I made out of roving. So it's the same technique, and I'll go over that. And then I will actually also show you how to put a little bit of gray on any dog since most of us, my dog's getting a lot of gray um, as well. I realized one thing I forgot to tell you was that you also need um, embroidery floss to tie your pom-pom. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna set these aside. So what you're gonna first do is make a pom-pom. Now, I wanna make sure that you make you, you want to make, actually, you want to have a pretty dense pom-pom. It's always nice to work with a lot, of, um, a lot of yarn first. If you don't wind a lot of yarn on, you're going to have a pretty um, not so dense pom-pom, and it's going to be hard to work with that to shape into a dog. So when I say dense, what I mean by that is that I would go at least 200 revolutions and if you're doubling up your yarn like me here, using both ends, you're just gonna go 100 revolutions. Okay, so here we go. I'll fast forward this part. So you're gonna secure that and then you're gonna wind. One complete circle round is a revolution. Okay, not too tight, not too loose. If you do it too tight, it's gonna be really hard for us to tie your pom-pom after. So just, you know, not too tight, not too loose. Okay, see you when I'm done winding. Okay, so this is a hundred revolution that I went. I had some yarn that got tangled up here, so I'm just gonna use that and put that in here. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna tie the pom-pom. So some of you may already be familiar with this process. You wanna measure out 
two feet, so maybe from your fingertip to your mid bicep, cut, and then I'll set that aside. Take this underneath your yarn bundle. Make sure your ends are even. And you're gonna make one single tie, not a knot, just a tie like this. You're gonna take this end, which is closer to the bottom here, take it to the other side, and flip your tool over. Adjust and make sure that this is in the middle. And then you're gonna make a surgeon's knot or a double overhand knot. So cross this over, one, two, and pull. Okay, now you just have to pull it um, snug like this. Don't pull it tight yet. Take this off the tool. And now we're gonna make a tiny little micro pull really close to the knot. It's just gonna to continue to tighten the pom-pom. And if you can press on it and it feels compressed, that means it's good to go, okay? So you might need a second finger here, somebody else's finger, or use your own here. Tie it really quickly, and I'm gonna make another tie. And then we're gonna cut. Now let's bring in a bowl. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna just cut your pom-pom open. Okay, make sure you get all the loops. But if you don't get all the loops, no worries. You'll, you'll probably see them later and you could just cut them then. Okay, couple things to keep in mind. So what you're gonna have is this shaggy piece like this. So the basics that I'm gonna do, what I always do first is I begin to um, felt out the eye socket. One thing to keep in mind is that if I'm gonna give this away, and I'm gonna hang it. What I like to do is I'd like to tr find that tight middle tie, okay? And for some of you guys, you might want to, cause you might forget, and this could be a good point of reference, if you're gonna hang the dog, you might just want to use, you might wanna hang it now, or just put a placeholder. We're gonna go underneath that tight middle tie, see that? Go underneath it, okay? I'm gonna leave this here because it's gonna be act as my point of reference for the dog, for the tie. So for instance, it's hanging from here. You don't wanna make eyes down here, you know, or on this side, okay? So this is gonna act as that. Now what you're gonna do, is you're just gonna begin, you're gonna take your felting needle and begin to felt out the eye socket, okay? Now you could lay it flat or you could just hold it. The nice thing about felting is that it's quite um, slow and so you don't have to worry about mistakes that much because you could always fix it usually. Okay, so at first it's slow, and then a lot of times what I notice is that once you start doing this, it begins to felt up like suddenly really quickly. It seems slow at first because you have to do a lot of tiny little pokes. It's so fun. So this is my tip for making the dog. Um, I find these small little tips really helpful. So first, I have that eye socket. It's not completely perfect. I'm gonna begin to just trim a little yarn off so it's a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so that's gonna be the ridge of the nose and this is gonna be the other eye socket right here. See, it's not completely um, flattened yet, but what I like to do is just to create almost like um, placeholders, okay? Because I like to actually begin, it's almost like sculpting. You just work on it to create, create the shapes, create the areas. And then I come back and define it even more later. 
Okay, there. So those are the two eye sockets. I don't know if you could see. Let me trim this yarn because it might be a little bit easier. Okay, and then I'm gonna start working on the nose, but what I like to do now is I like to actually put in the eyes as a placeholder. So I have a whole bunch of different shapes here. Let me see what it looks like with the big eyes. Okay, I'm gonna use the smaller eyes. And if this is really dense, if the eye area, when you um, try to insert the eyes really dense, I like to just take a needle and poke a hole and then follow by the eye. Oops. This just helps it insert it. There you go. Same for this one. You put the eye in. Don't worry, I'm gonna come back and work on that later. Right now, I just wanna um, create basically proximity and begin to shape out what the dog will look like. Whoops. This is a little bit like Chewbacca almost. So funny, it's so, it's so furry. Okay, I know this is really hard to see, but don't worry, we're gonna come back. Okay, do you see the two eyes there? If I don't like the size of that, I might come back and actually um, put in bigger eyes. Now we're gonna do the nose, okay? What I like to do with the nose is, if this is gonna be like a longer nose, or a mouth, I should, mouth and nose, you wanna have as much yarn as possible. So see how I'm holding it like this, almost like a flower? Okay. This is going to take probably about 10 minutes, okay? You're just gonna poke, 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 poke this yarn together. Be careful of your hands always because this is a needle after all. So do you see how I'm working that? This part does need require the most patience but what I like to do is I like to work in a circle at the base first okay and the base is what's gonna basically stabilize and act as almost like the trunk of the nose okay so go in a circle and create that base so I'm going to give you a quick preview. So you're going to, you know, felt and poke at the bottom here. And as you go on, you're just going to, you know, begin to poke this down. And it's going to um, bunch up and begin to create a mound like this, believe it or not. Trust me, this will definitely work. Okay. So I might put this on fast forward so that... Um, this would take shape a little bit sooner, but like I said, it's gonna take about 10 minutes. Um, and also depending on the yarn and how much you have, how you're poking, etc. Okay? So again, do the base and then and then build and then just poke towards the center. Okay? Alright, guys, I'll see you when this takes shape a little bit more. Okay, so I wanna show you real fast. So I stopped this a little bit. So see how this, the bottom part has now become completely felted, as I mentioned, right? See how it's like completely felted and you have all the shag on top. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to begin to just felt like this. Okay, we're gonna work. You're gonna work your yarn inwards. So this, again, also is gonna take a while. It's gonna probably take another 10 minutes. So just be patient, but it's super fun and it's um, actually quite relaxing. <laughs> it's great if you're watching a TV show. So you're just gonna keep, um, you know, needle felting that and it's gonna basically become a nose. So I'll see you when I'm done with that part. Okay, I'm back. So see how 
that nose is actually pretty big because I put so because we had so much yarn if you want it to be a little bit more flat you could actually trim more yarn off at first but the nice thing about felting is that you could actually sculpt it a little bit and if you wanted it to be flatter you could pro you could continue to felt it and it will just compress down so this is really cute all right so what I'm gonna do with this is that if you just put on one of these noses, it will immediately almost turn into an animal. I realized too, this is looking like a lion in a lot of ways. So I'm gonna put on that nose because I know it's gonna go right there. It's so cute. And then I'll start shaping everything else. So the more you do, the more you'll probably begin to develop your own rhythm and style. Um, for some of you guys, you know, doing the eye area first might work really well. For me, the nose is where it's at for me, and I find that it's easier for me to um, kind of begin to shape everything else. Okay, I'm probably going to put in a mouth here, so that's great. So this is going to give me an opportunity to show you how to just felt on detail with a little bit of roving. Okay, so with the eyes, I'm going to switch out and see what it might look like with the bigger eye. If that suits the this dog better I don't know I think that looks kind of too much like a doll so I'm gonna keep my tiny little eyes okay now I'm gonna trim a tiny bit off because you know most dogs well some dogs I guess have a lot of fur that's everywhere but I'm gonna start shaping this off it's gonna really start looking like a dog okay this is up to you so like I said if you have a picture to reference it or something to just get inspiration from it's really gonna help this process a lot I'm just kind of using my creative intuition and seeing where it goes don't worry about trimming that off again that was just for a point of reference now I'm going to trim the back you can leave the back long or short it's up to you up to the dog I could take this off now because my dog is pretty formed so okay. now we're going to decide what we're going to do with the ears so you have a couple options Oh, actually, you know what? Let me put on the, the mouth first. Oh my goodness, look at how cute that is. And it's funny with some yarn, when you um, felt it, it's gonna look um, really almost like fur. And it's gonna sometimes be a little bit um, curly. So I'm gonna put on the mouth and see how little I'm using. Actually, that might even be too much. Okay. And I'm gonna twist it so that it's almost like a strand. Okay. This will almost be kind of the gum. The gum is, is pink almost. I might put a darker accent on as well. So I'm gonna twist this so that it's like on, almost like a, just a piece like that. see it looks cute okay now I'm just gonna gently felt that this is gonna go really quickly roving um, locks up really quickly and it's very manipulable which is nice you could actually just use the tip of the needle we're going for subtlety here. So again, you could always add more on. So use a little bit first, make some definition from that. That's cute. It's hardly noticeable, but let's see. Sometimes it's nice to not, for it not to be totally noticeable the funny thing is that this 
um, yarn just happened to be black right here so it almost looks like inside the mouth so that kind of worked out perfectly so cute look at that isn't that cute okay so now I'm gonna go over the ears real quickly for all of you guys out there if you're doing these type of ears so this is just like a floppy ear where's my yarn here it is what I do for these floppy ears is I take actually a loom tool and I just go like this I think I went about seven times end it at the same place okay cut take that out okay and see how it becomes almost like an ear like that so you're just going to begin to felt this this is probably going to take about five minutes just felt it together and it's going to mat up like this but see how the yarn i don't know if you could see that the yarn still leaves some detail which looks really really nice gives it some definition so you could just do that for about five minutes and it'll begin to felt up and you could just when you attach it we're going to attach it the same way we would do um, a full roving um, ear so I'll show you how to do that as well we're just going to felt it on to the dog um, okay so I just happen to have two color roving which looks pretty good and you're going to take this a pretty you know not too small so it's about that. I have a tiny bit on the side right here. I'm gonna make pointy ears that goes up like this. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna begin to poke with the general shape in mind, okay? So, and you could add to it, okay? So make sure you lift it up if you're working with styrofoam like I have here. You don't want to go too long without lifting it up because it'll just get really embedded in there. Okay. One tip to keep in mind is that if you want something pointy like this, I ended up um, cutting it with scissors to make it pointy for one of them because to put this brown on the side, it got a little bit messy, so I just took scissors and trimmed it and it looked perfect. Okay, so once you have the general shape, if you want the ears to be a little bit denser, just add more roving onto the body. See how quickly that is? I think that it's probably less than a minute. Roving is just super, super easy. Okay. Let's turn it back to the front side. I just wanted to get a tiny bit of felting done in the back, but you don't want to spend too much time in the back. You want to spend more time in the front where you're really shaping it. Can you see that? That's pretty pointy. I realize this is a little bit thin on the top here, so I'll put in more felt. So for this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and just do one ear so that you won't have to stick around for another five or 10 minutes. This is looking pretty good. You could use the top of your needle too to push the, so nice. The needle is just really, just really, it's easy to help manipulate your roving. You could use it to get your roving in place even more. Okay, I'm gonna put in a tiny bit of accent, just a, a tiny bit of another brown, just to give it some Additional texture makes it look a little bit more natural. Okay, so before I go any further, let me put that in. 
and see what that looks like. That's looking pretty cute. I'm gonna need to work on that a little bit more. It's not thick enough for me. And then I'm gonna trim it down so that it's really pointy. That's the look I'm going for. realize my table is shaking. Sorry about that. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I like the fuzz coming out of it. Okay. Can use my hand a little bit. I don't think I have to trim it. It's looking pretty good. So if you want to trim it, you can. Just go like that and just cut a tiny bit off to make it the shape that you want. But mine looks pretty good. I like that. Okay. Now I'm going to trim the head a little bit more so that the ears can be showing. Now I'm going to insert the ears right there. And this is really, really easy to do. To insert the ear, just go like this. Okay, so I do have to say you can glue it if you want. I love felting it. I feel like all the pieces should be locking together. And all you have to do is just poke at the bottom of the ear into straight down into... The yarn itself. So you're going to do that side and then do the back. Just take about two minutes. Don't take too long. That's where it really locks in. Okay. All right. So like I said, I'm going to work on the other ear afterwards now for the final piece I'm gonna shape it a little bit so it looks more like a the dog that I want so sometimes if you're just using you if you're freestyling like me you're using a little bit of imagination just take a tiny tiny bit off at a time don't take a ton off because you can't bring it back just like real hair <laughs> once you do that Oh, this is cute. It almost looks like a Pomeranian hybrid of sort. Okay. So I think we covered everything in this. So again, let's go over what we learned and what we did together here. So all the dogs in this style has something really in common. They all start with a plain pom-pom. That's it. Really, really easy, plain pom-pom, made with any of the loom tool. And what you want to do is you be want to begin to shape a dog's personality by doing the nose, adding some extra detail like the mouth here or some gray hair. Um, you want to put in the eyes before or after as you shape the nose. For me, I like it better to put it on first and then shaping the nose. Then you put the little nose on and then the ears and then you begin to trim. So for instance, for this dog, one other tip too is that you could use a tip of your roving, um, your felting needle and begin to take apart some of your yarn and it just creates more of a fuzzy look and it's really, really nice and natural. And you just wanna, you know, Begin to like reference back to the picture that you you are working with. Trim it as you need, but trim little at a time. And then you're going to be really happy with these cute dogs. So if you have a dog in mind, this is such a great gift to give to somebody. Um, you know, dog lovers and cat lovers. I have to come up with a cat one. So dog lovers will swoon over this. So enjoy everyone. If you have any questions, leave us some messages um, at the bottom of our video and we'll get back to you with some tips and some answers.